Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Miami Dolphins franchise. The Dolphins are sitting pretty right now. Five and four, we are on a three-game win streak, and we are playing some good football, heading into maybe the toughest game on the schedule slated so far, and that is versus the eight and one Green Bay Packers. Going into this week, we have a short week, so we definitely want to make sure we are 100% and upset one of the best teams in the NFL right now, especially in the NFC. Now, I have not focused on the draft at all, and we will start off this episode focusing on that. Now, you still saw the first draft story right there. Steve Sanchez, a left tackle out of Notre Dame. He is a first-round projected pick, and he is a pretty much a mauler. I wouldn't even call him a pass protector at all, but in college, he's playing left tackle. He probably is a lot better than his competition, and that's why he plays there now. In the NFL, I could probably see him moving to guard, so we will have to see what happens with him. Now, the scouting update comes out in October. I was expecting that to come out in September. That's why I've waited so long to show you guys some draft prospects. We'll start to reveal more each episode now that we know it's not coming out anytime soon. And who he was blocking was Eddie Mercado. So we saw a look at him. He is also a first-round uh, protect, projected guy, but a second-round talent. But the next guy, Sherwin Finney. He is the son of a legendary coach, projected to go number 21 overall right now as it stands. But this guy is a monster. Out of Louisville, we will follow this guy very, very closely. Six foot five, 270. He is probably going to be the number one prospect on our board. He is an early first round projection. And one thing that we have pretty much lacked, I think, is pass rush when we only rush four i think that's the one thing that we need to really get right with this squad i want to take a look at the cornerback group we all know the issues that byron jones has been having we moved him inside so we have a trio of cornerbacks here at the top of the draft one of my favorite guys right here is ty upshaw all of these guys are early first round talents which is amazing they are projected in the second round some of them and Ty Upshaw is my favorite, I think. 23 years old, 5'11", man-to-man. -man. He comes in with B-man coverage, B-minus awareness, B-press. So if I wanted to do some blitzes and press coverage, I could definitely do that. But DeAndre Brinkley is the wild card. He is out of a small school of Wyoming where Josh Allen went to school. B-minus, man. B-minus play rec as well. And B-minus catch. He's also two years younger. But the competition he played was not as good as the Big Ten, per se. So we will have to keep an eye out on those three cornerbacks, along with Sherwin Finney. It's definitely going to be interesting to see what those guys end up being in the draft. Now back to the season here as we face the 8-1 and one Green Bay Packers, led by Jordan Love. He is not even a top 40 quarterback as far as attributes go, but still leading this team to a one-loss season. Will Fuller signed with the Packers in the offseason. He looks to replace Devontae Adams. Doing a pretty good job so far. Five touchdowns, leading their team in yards as well. So we'll see what happens today. Now, what's different this game is that we are missing three offensive and defensive linemen as Darius Howard will miss with two broken ribs, or miss two weeks with broken ribs. And we will also be missing Liam Eichenberg. And also, Paradis is still out with that injury. So we will have the left side of our line kind of looking a little different. So let's get this game underway. As that is the third string running back, Pinkney, back to receive the open kickoff. He kneels it, and out comes Jordan Love. We have the home field advantage today, so hopefully we will use that in our favor. Remember, coming into this game, we will come in with plus 10 break tackle, plus 10 play wreck. And I forgot what the last one is, but both teams have that advantage today. So here's a second and nine carry. This time Aaron Jones cutting up field, but the defense is right there. Maybe that play wreck is coming in handy right there. Jerome Baker on the stop. Two-yard gain brings it to a third and seven. Love in the pocket. Under pressure, gets hit on the throw. It will be incomplete. He was looking for Bob Tanyan, but it looks like Raquan Davis was there on the pressure. Tua has recovered nicely after having more interceptions than picks 
through the first seven games, and now here he is, 12 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. So here he is under center now for his first play, throwing across the middle. That is Jalen Waddle, 99 speed now. He picks up the first down, gain of about 10 yards. So at about the 27-yard line, it looks like the Packers stack the box, but Tua throws to an open man. It's A.B. He picks up a gain of 12. You know, I've been lining A.B. up more in the slot as we do have Isabella now on the outside to kind of spread out the defense. So here is Tua now. Screen pass called, second and 10, and that is TPH picking up a gain of eight. We don't run the screen pass often, and I don't know how the Packers saw that coming. Third and one now at the 50. Handoff, wide open hole. That is the backup center, Michael Dieter, filling in for Matt Paradis. He opens up that hole right there. It's a big time first down. Robert Hunt playing at left guard now as here's Tua under pressure, and he gets hit on that throw. Austin Jackson gave up the pressure that time. Third and 10 now at about the 36. We're just into field goal range. Jackson gets abused again, but Tua gets rid of it, and he is going to find Jalen Waddle for the first down throw. Waddle is just such a weapon. You line him up inside, line him up outside. I like to line him up everywhere because he gets guarded by different guys. Second and goal, here's a throw across the middle. That is going to be Mike Gesicki. Easy score for the touchdown, and that is his first touchdown in the last three games. But Gesicki has been doing excellent things in the passing game, and that makes it 7 to nothing. So here we go with the lead at home as now Jordan Love comes back at the 25 under pressure right away. It's a sack by Adam Butler, the veteran on this defensive line who had came into this season backing up Darius Howard. But with Howard hurt, he gets an opportunity. Third and long this time. Jordan Love throws to an open man across the middle. It's Tim Patrick who signed with the Packers in the offseason. The Packers signed three new receivers to replace their trio as they do have Tim Patrick along with Will Fuller and Zach Pascal. Here is Aaron Jones out of the backfield. He is still there. He signed that extension with the Packers before the 2020 season. And now here they go, handoff up the middle, and that will be a gain of about four yards across the 50. Third and four now. Can they convert for another third down? Here is Love throwing, and there is Will Fuller, the former Miami Dolphin. For only one season, he is most known for the Texans, but a first down. Inside the 20 now is Jordan Love is in the pocket, throwing to the end zone. He's got a man, and that is caught. And that was Amari Rodgers, but he cannot stay in bounds. And that brings it to a third and nine. Here is Love throwing to the end zone again, and it's going to be caught. Tim Patrick goes up to get it. It's a touchdown. Throwing to only where his man can get it. It is 7-7. So into the second quarter now. Tua, let's see if he can lead another drive. Here's a throw to the right side. Gesicki is definitely going to shatter his career high in catches, touchdowns, and yards this season. It's a first down. So now at about the 44, here's a handoff. And once again, a first down pickup by Terrence Bidhoward. Seven rushes for 26 yards early on in this game. We come out here with five wide, which is something I love to do now with Isabella because it is another speed element added to this receiving core. That's a gain of five for Miles Gaskin. Third and six, another throw to the sticks, and Gesicki has done this all season. Just throw to Gesicki at the sticks. He's going to be there for the first down. So now under center this time, play action fake, throwing across the middle. It's Antonio Brown, and he can't hang on in traffic. Jair Alexander was there in zone. So now they rush four, second and ten, throw to the sideline. It is caught, and that is Waddle. The reason why we like to line him up everywhere is because he sometimes gets those linebacker matchups. That time it's Martin who is guarding him, and he is an inside linebacker. Second and 15 now after a penalty. That's going to be Antonio Brown. He picks up about five yards. So inside a field goal range definitely at the 16, third and nine. There's a throw to Isabella. And they're going to call a legal forward pass. I hate this penalty. Madden still doesn't have that right. 7-10 game now as Miami does settle for three on that drive. Jordan Love in the pocket now. He tries to get away and runs straight into the pass rush. Christian 
Wilkins gets in for the sack. Loss of seven yards. So at their own 11 now, second and long, we send the nickel blitz. Love throws to the outside. It's going to be incomplete, looking for A.J. Dillon. Incomplete pass. Third and 17, we do send some more pressure. Good blitz pickup, and that is caught. Tim Patrick across the middle, cuts up field. We misplayed the ball by Marcus Humblecut that time. It's a first down. So we do give up another first down on a third and long. Once again, for the third time this game, here's a throw to Bob Tanyan. He picks up about a gain of six. Jordan Love is seven for 11 in this game as well. So now they're at the 50. Love throws deep into coverage. It's tipped and almost caught. Eric Rowe was there, but somehow let that go right through his hands and it almost was caught. Third and nine, throw to left side. Tim Patrick again, beating Byron Jones on the outside. It's going to be a first down. So at the 39 now, Jordan Love in the Got pocket. It. Can't get away. Andrew Van Ginkle along with Christian Wilkins were pretty much there at the quarterback in a matter of seconds. Our third sack of the young game. Third and long now. Can we come up with a stop here at the two-minute warning? It's going to be Pinckney who throws off a defender and has more. He gets inside the 10. How about the third string running back Pinckney picks up another third down. This time they don't throw the ball. They run a draw play. So now at the three, fullback die. This one will be a stop by Baker. The Packers will call their second timeout. Third and goal now, just under a minute left here in the first half. Here is Love running his man in motion. He's going to hand off. This time, Dylan makes the man miss and does get stood up by Javon Holland along with Chris Barnes. It's going to be a fourth down, and the Packers will not go for this. They will actually line up for the field goal, and they will make it a tie ball game. So under a minute left here in the first half. Here is Tua. He will get sacked. Zadarius Smith gets to him. And that will be a loss of about nine yards. So second and 19 now, 40 seconds left. Here is Tua, clean pocket, throws deep, and he's got Jalen Waddle, who straight outruns KC Hayward on the outside. Touchdown, Dolphins. I can't believe they would leave single coverage, no help over the top on Jalen Waddle. It just makes zero sense. Clean pocket by Tua allowing him to throw 60 yards down the field. I don't, I'm not sure if he can throw that far in real life from the pocket, but he made it happen in Madden. It is 17 to 10 and a half. What a good game, eight and one Packers. Let's see what the second half holds. So here we go up by seven here as we do start out the second half with the ball. We have put together some nice drives here. Here's a throw to the sideline. That is gonna be caught by TPH but Jair Alexander was right there. It's a loss of about three yards. So second and 13, here is Tua again, stepping up in the pocket. He will take it himself, trying to scramble and slide, and he does fumble. It's picked up by Kenny Clark, and now the Packers start out with good field position at the 33. We tried to get down for the slide, but we got hit from behind, and it ends up being a turnover. The first of the game for the Dolphins. Here's a handoff, this time Pinckney in the game. Now, Aaron Jones got shaken up earlier. He has not returned in this matchup. A.J. Dillon checks in now at running back, third and one. Love tries to scramble. He's got space to run, but he decides to throw it at the last second. Incomplete. A questionable throw that time by the young quarterback, and they have to settle for three on that drive. So here is Tua now on the next drive, rolling, throwing. He's got Isabella. He makes the man miss, getting to about the 41-yard line. It's a first down. Isabella showing off the elusiveness. It's a first down. So here we are on the opposite side of the 50 now, play action fake. Here's Gasicki open. He tries to outrun the defense, does get stopped for about a gain of five. 250 yards passing here for Tua as now we get it to the 33. Toss play out to left side, third and two. TPH has the acceleration to get to the outside, and he has the first down, picking up a gain of 12. 
Now, I want to see what our red zone defense offense is all about here as we have scored on, I would say, three or four drives so far this game, and that is going to be a catch by Isabella getting to about the 12. Second and one now. It looks like they rush five. Tua moves the pocket, throws the left side, and it's a wide open Isabella. It's a touchdown. Let's just take a look at that route because he was wide open, and, oh, he made Jair Alexander look absolutely lost on that route 24 to 13 Isabella has scored four times since being a dolphin now so here is love back out onto the field down by 11 here's a throw to the sideline that one is caught by Pinckney picking up a gain of four running his running back in motion this time here is love throwing to the right side he's got a man wide open it's Travis Fulgham He's wide open. It's going to be a touchdown. It looks like, once again, Xavier Howard tried to make one of those exciting diving interceptions, but he just misses. And that just cost us a long touchdown given up. Down by three now are the Packers. Eight and one, trying to hold on to that one loss record. But here is Andy Isabella getting open. That is a drag route, and he has the speed to really get open on those routes right there. So first and 10 now, Tua throws across the middle. Isabella again. I'm starting to see some chemistry with Isabella and Tua that I haven't seen with any other receiver except Jalen Waddle. We could be looking at the next big tandem here in Miami. Miami. Terrence Bidhauer picks up a gain of eight, bringing it to the 36 as now we line up under center. Play action fake. Here is Tua throwing. Antonio Brown is open. Now, ever since we added Isabella, I feel like Antonio Brown has had more opportunities to be wide open across the middle of the field. Inside the red zone now. Handoff. This is TPH making a man miss in the hole. He gets to about the eight-yard line and lines up here for a third and five. Here is Tua in the pocket, throws to Gaskin, who's in the game. He fights for the end zone. It's a touchdown. Tua with three on the day. This time he finds the backup running back, Miles Gaskin, and now it's back to a two-score lead. Now at the end of the third quarter now, let's see if the Packers can put together another drive to match us. Here's a quick throw across the middle. That is Pinkney out of the backfield. Jordan Love only has six incompletions, but a lot of them have been checkdowns and throws under 15 yards. Third and three. Here's a throw to left side. That is caught by Pinckney, but Pinckney loses where he is on the field, and he steps out of bounds. Up by 10 now. Here's Miami at the end of the third quarter with possession. Tua throws deep. He's got his man Jalen Waddle downfield, and that is a first down. Preston Smith got matched up on him in coverage. And that's just not going to work. It looks like Preston Smith needed help over the top. He did not get it. He just got burnt on that route. So here is Tua now on the other side of the 50. Play action fake. Isabella's wide open. Inside the five, he tries to fight for the end zone. Pushed out at about the two. Tua has only four incompletions and has four touchdowns on the day. Isabella is doing his thing as well. He's over 100 yards in this game. Waddles over 100 yards as well. The play action fake set that up perfectly. Inside the two now, TPH into the game. We're going to give it to him. Hand off. He does get tackled at about the inch yard line. As now we lose a yard on second down, bring it to a third and goal. Hand off, TPH. It's a touchdown. Give him a different look on the goal line. From the shotgun, we hand it to the big power running back, 38 to 21. It looks like that 8-1 record might turn to 8-2 if we can take care of business here in the fourth. 17-point lead. Here's a throw to the sideline. That is going to be Zach Pascal who gets his first catch of the game. It's actually going to be his third. What am I saying? Three for 39 for him. Jordan Love now at the 42. Throw into the sideline. Open man, and that is going to be a catch by Fulgham, and it will be a first down. Now they have an offensive lineman hurt. First and 10 now across the 50. Adam Butler giving chase, and he gets Jordan Love to throw it out of play. Adam Butler has put together some good pressures in this game. Second and 10 now. Here is Jordan Love in Got the pocket. He. he goes down. Coverage sack, and there is Butler. 
He didn't get to him the last play. He gets to him on this one. Down by 17 now. The Packers at a third and long. Third and 25. Throws to the flats, and it will be caught. But fourth and seven, Marcus Humblecut on the tackle. Is now that brings it to maybe the player that will end this game. Jordan Love throws deep. One-on-one. -on -one. It's picked off. It's Byron Jones here. He gets his first interception of the series. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Byron Jones has not created any turnovers so far, and he finally gets one. What is this, episode 23? Now here is TPH on the next drive. Hand off, and he gets to the edge. He's putting on his speed. Inside the 10 on the other side. 138, that's his first 100 yard, his second 100 yard game of the season so far. But he definitely has not shown that type of speed. That's his longest run of his career. But here on third and goal. This time, TPH, or not TPH, Tua goes down. It's going to be Randy Gregory on the sack. This game is way out of reach, so I want to bring in the backups here with about three minutes to go. I want to give you guys just a quick look into our backups. As this is Edward Ging at quarterback. Bronco McMacklin, who was signed off the practice squad a couple of weeks ago. Third and six, throw to the sideline. That is caught. Nice throw by Edward Ying on the wheel route to James Washington, and he gets open. Gain of 25. Now, Ying is different than Tua. He is not as mobile, but he can still throw the football pretty well as we have a couple of nice depth receivers in Zach West and guys like James Washington. And I think that we can really, really – you know, not skip a beat too much if a receiver goes down. Not saying I want that to happen. But I want to see what our backups can do here at the end of this game. Bronco Big Macklin is a developmental running back. He's not great in anything. But here's a throw across the middle. It's James Washington again. Edward Ying finds him. Now, Ying is doing this for the versus the first team defense. And he's already put together a nice little drive. Now at the one with 17 seconds left. This is a stretch play, and that is Bronco running over a defender. It's a touchdown, and he gets in for his first career touchdown. Good to see our backups doing some things here at the end of these games, and you got to love it here. We beat the Packers. We definitely stopped one of the hottest teams in football today, 8-1, and one, and now they're 8-2, and 48-21, to 21, a decisive win as well. Even our backups come in and put together a nice drive. We have actually been very, very good on offense the last three games. Put up a lot of points, and our offense is, what, top five in the league right now. In our defense, we're pretty much bottom five, to be honest with you. We are not doing bad on defense, but I think there's times where we can be better, especially when we play the great offenses. I think that, you know, we could be better stopping the run. I think that's definitely been our Achilles heel. Today we got after the passer, and that was very, very interesting because we haven't done that all season as far as just rushing four. Usually we need to send pressure, but today we didn't even send any pressure, and we got four sacks. Andy Isabella and Waddle had career games because they both went over 100 yards in the same game. Both scored a touchdown as well. And I want to give it up to Robert Hunt, who actually was playing, I believe he was playing left guard today, and he – Pancake three guys and didn't give up a sack. I was very, very proud of that. Adam Butler, two sacks in this one. Christian Wilkins, one and a half. Andrew Van Ginko added a half sack. And then Raekwon Davis got to the quarterback once as well. So this was a very, very good game from our defensive line. And then Byron Jones adds his first interception of this series so far. We shut down the young quarterback, Jordan Love. He couldn't really get comfortable all game long. Upgrades after the game, Brandon Jones is a young safety in his third year out of Texas now. He is looking to possibly take over for Eric Rowe as a starting strong safety next year. I guess we'll have to see how that goes. Marcus Humblecut gets an upgrade. He goes up to 70 overall, and he is a young player. I, I will say this. He's around the football a lot, but I don't want to mistake that for actually making plays on defense. It's just making tackles. Bronco McMacklin. He gets an upgrade for his first career touchdown. He is, like I said, a developmental running back. Doesn't do anything particularly well, but I like him right now. He is a shifty guy that's not really had, doesn't really have top end speed, 
but he is a developmental guy. I like developing these young guys on the roster. So we get the win, and we end up getting 2,500 in XP and also plus 10 in uh, morale for that. And, and just for, you know, beating that streak right there, we actually get plus 10 break tackle, play recognition, and tackle for the next game. And next game we go up against the Ravens, and we get another 2,500 XP for that for stopping their streak. And now we are 6-4 and four on top of the AFC East. We are definitely in good position. As you can just see, our last three games, we actually have at least scored 28 points, and we have gone up about 10 points in each game, 28, 37, and now 48. I don't expect to go to 58 next game versus the Ravens. We will be on the road. And then we will face the Jets and the Patriots before our bye week, and then we will end the season in the last four games looking to – Kind of prepare for the playoffs. I think that our division is having a down year. We're going to have to take care of business there. We will see what happens. Now, I want to highlight this right here. The X-Factor ability is on for the defensive and offensive coordinator, so I have no idea why, you know, our stars are not showing for, you know, Jalen Waddle on the field, also for Raekwon Davis, who is also a superstar, uh, a superstar trait player. I have no idea why those stars are not on the field right now. I have everything enabled. I also have the abilities on the tree. Let me know if you guys have seen this before and how to fix it. I'm not really sure. But we will probably have a triple header episode next episode. It will be the Packers, or not the Packers, the Ravens, Jets, and Patriots. So we will have to see how we will do in that stretch of three games. But Tua did win player of the week this week. Four touchdown passes. He did get sacked twice, but two for 21 as far as carries and had just as many incompletions as he did as he did touchdowns so a very good week from him well deserved we'll see what we can do in the second half of this season hit subscribe hit that like button stay tuned let's get it let's go out the rain oh.